What's going on guys, it's Danny from Slow Restoration and we got the trans on the C10 completely finished up. Uh, the only thing we do have to do is uh, top it off the fluid, but everything's bolted back up, hooked up, um, all looking good. We got everything buttoned up down here, so now it's going to actually be time to uh, start this cam install. We have a Texas Speed cam going in this. So the first step is to get rid of the front of the motor here, the, the accessory drive, water pump. Of course, the front cover's got to come off to do a cam. So everything needs to be out of the way. And we're also, well, before we can even do that, we need to drain the coolant. So I believe there's a drain over here. Yep, right here. We'll put a hose on that. Get it draining a while and start our disassembly of the front of the motor here. Got the coolant drained. Um, we're working on getting all the the motor, the front of the motor, like I said, pulled apart. The radiator is that obviously loose. We need to get that pulled out. We got a couple of things to unhook for the electric fans. Um, we got the air intake tube off. Uh, we're working on getting the air conditioning compressor off. We're just going to keep working here, get all this removed. And what we're doing is um, making room to slide that cam out. We're also changing the intake manifold and the valve covers, obviously, to do a cam need to come off. But we're replacing them also and doing coil, coil relocation. The, it's going to totally change the look of this truck under the hood. Um, you'll see, well, if, you, if you've been following along for a while, you have you already know what's going on it because we revealed that a while back. just took us a while to actually get to the job. But um, if not, it's going to, like I said, totally change the look of under hood here. And it'll, it'll match the rest of the truck. It'll match the rest of the build look. So... Pretty excited to see this thing different. It's definitely going to sound way different with the cam in it. Um, it's a nice, healthy Texas Speed cam. Um, I'll show you all the specs when we get that far, but let's keep going here. You can see we're making some progress here. We have uh, the whole front of the motor off. We still have to pull the balancer and then the timing cover. We'll be ready to slide that cam out. We have the valve covers, the intake off. And here's a sneak peek. We'll get some light here. Here's the valve covers going back on. So, like I said, we'll match this truck way better. And our light just went off. Battery's dead. But we are going to do a coil relocation kit on this also. And stay tuned for the intake also. Um, I'm going to keep ripping here. We'll get to the intake in a couple minutes. And the final step to get inside here is remove this balancer. Now this is, a, I think it's an ATI super damper. Um, so it doesn't come off like the normal. Well, it still comes off like the normal LS balancer, but you have to use a different puller when it actually bolts on. So we'll get this off. And while we're at it, we'll, we'll show you the intake. We'll get into that more, but let's go ahead and get this off. We'll get the front cover off and actually get into the cam itself. Got the balancer off. Uh, every, all the bolts are out of the front cover. Of course, you have the ones you can see, and there is one on either side that bolts up from the oil pan, but that too is removed. So let's go ahead and get in here. Huh. So we do have a aftermarket double roller timing chain on here. Um, I don't know a whole lot about this motor, but we're learning as we go. Let me get this out of the way. So like I said, we, we don't know a whole lot about this motor, um, how many miles or anything are on it, but we do know all this was done at the same time when the truck was built. And honestly, this it does not have very many miles on it at all. I would say under a thousand miles and probably more like a couple hundred miles. This truck just was never really driven. Um, and as you can see here, there is play in this chain. Not a ton. I mean, nothing at all to be concerned with. All chains have play, even if they're brand new. Um, it might be a little bit tighter if it was brand new. Um, but as soon as you run them, I mean, if you put them together, ran them, took them right back apart, you're probably going to have play just about like that. But either way, we're good with that. 
I did put the bolt back in here. We're gonna go ahead and pop the spark plugs out. I did get the, the rocker arms off, so all the valves are relieved of uh, pressure because we have to change those valve springs also. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the uh, spark plugs out. We can get this spun over and line the marks up. Here is the one. And once we get that spun around enough, we'll be able to see the other mark on the crank gear. We'll get them lined up so when we reinstall the cam, um, we can make sure it's top dead center lined up all good. So let me get the spun over. We'll zip these two. We'll line the marks up. We'll zip these three uh, bolts out. Pull the sprocket off. Well, let's just get into it. And we did go ahead and get our our uh, timing marks lined up. I don't know. If you can see this one for sure. Um, this the crank sprocket has a corresponding dot. They are lined up straight up through the center. Um, we did pull, pop these three bolts out. Now we'll go ahead and pull this crank or uh, cam gear off. We'll get it pulled off, let the chain kind of rest there. And I'll show you a trick to see. The, the LS motors have lifter trays that hold the lifters up. Sometimes they get weak or wear um, or just don't fit really, really tight and they will keep falling down. And that could be an issue when you slip the cam out because the lifter could fall all the way down into the motor, which would be a major problem because you'd have to tear the motor down to fix that. Um, so technically, well, to change the lifters, you do have to pull the heads on an LS. Um, but um, you can change the cam because of those lifter trays and the lifters get popped up in them and stay. But as soon as we get that off, I'll show you a trick to see if you're going to have issues. Um, and there's a couple ways to remedy, remedy that. So let's go ahead and get that cam gear off and we'll go from there. We got our cam gear slid off there. Uh, like I said, you can just kind of let the chain rest there. That's fine. It's obviously not going anywhere. It's looped around the chain or the, the crank. So the next step is to, um, well, I'll, I'll show you that trick I was talking about. So we'll actually spin the cam over a couple times. Just grab that dowel pin and just spin the cam over. It spins fairly easy. We'll spin that over and what that's gonna do is push all the lifters up into the trays. So we still right now have our push rods in and we can actually push down and see how that one must be on a lube. We can see how hard it is to push down. If any of them fall down with like little to no pressure, you know you're gonna have an issue with that lifter falling down. Now some of them will not go down because the cam lobe is up. All these have a little bit of friction on them, so we should be good with that. So the, these front two lobes are the only two that didn't fall. So we can actually spin this again. You can see those push rods popping back up. And we'll stop the cam at a different spot and test these. And again, they have friction too, but as you can see, once we come around, they pop back up also. So I feel safe to go ahead and pull this cam. We're gonna go ahead and pull these four bolts off the cam retaining plate. We'll get that out of the way and the cam will just simply pull out. We can use some uh, studs or bolts in here to grab that cam, give us a little leverage. Or, I mean, so you can also, the cam's hollow, so you can put a screwdriver in the center to help you get it out far enough to actually grab the hole of the camshaft itself. Um, and um, one of the other tricks is once we get this off, there's some passages here. You can take wooden dowels and push in there. We'll keep those lifters from falling also. They make different tools for that, but the wooden dowels are very cheap. Um, but I feel safe with this motor. Like I said, it's pretty fresh. Uh, the heads have obviously just been put on and all the, all the parts seem very fresh on this motor and we don't have any of the lifters just falling down by themselves. So let's go ahead and get that plate off. Get this old stock cam out and get that texas speed cam slid in now while, while i do feel comfortable slipping that cam out and slipping the new one i do like to have the new cam all ready to go so pull it out of the bag um, texas speed ships these pretty nice so just make sure there's no debris you can spray it down with some brake clean dry it off and 
lube it up. Uh, definitely look down the center too. Make sure there's no debris inside there. Um, all the Texas Speed cams do come laser etched on the back. So there is the specs. I think you can see that, but it's um, a 233, 239 at 50 thousandths duration, 600 lift on a 112 lobe separation angle. So it's going to be a nice little cam for this truck. Definitely going to give it a lot more sound than that stock cam. Old cam is out. We got the new cam lubed up halfway. We'll slip it through and lube the other half. Just makes it a little bit easier to handle. And we have success. The new cam is in. Um, I use this rod. It fits pretty snug inside the cam. It really helps you to get some leverage to get that cam flat in. But uh, you don't really need anything. You can slip it in. Just be careful when you're slipping that cam in. You don't nick the cam bearings. But um, pretty straightforward. Other than that. Uh, we'll clean everything up. Of course, our cam will spin, should spin nice and free now. I'll spin around to get the that lube we put on. It's pretty thick, so it does have a little bit of friction, but uh, nice and smooth anyway. So we'll get this uh, cam retaining plate put back on. And with those bolts cleaned up, I do use Loctite on these. I use a red Loctite and the bolts actually get torqued to 18 foot pounds. And we should be good to go. Once we get the cam sprocket back on there, of course, the dowel pin needs to line up. And your two dots need to line back up also. We'll run our bolts in, pull that uh, gear tight against the cam. Um, I always put red Loctite on these also, so I back them out one at a time, and then they get torqued down to 26 foot-pound. With that done, our cam is now installed, of course, and we just need to reassemble the front of the motor, change our valve springs out, and uh, check, we double check our push rod length, and yeah, we'll be making some more noise in no time. We are going uphill. How is she going that fast on that scooter? That thing's electric. It's got an electric motor on the Amish scooter. That's awesome.